Stocks are approaching a buy point. Market breadth is deeply oversold. Is dollar unstoppable and is inflation defeated? We'll look at gold and silver as they collapse through a shattered support. All this and more in today's edition of MasterCharsTrading.com Market Recap for Friday, September 29th, 2023. If you haven't yet done so, please like this video and also hit the uh, subscribe button to this channel. Share this video so more people can see it. This is truly an important um, action from you guys and it was what keeps this channel going. If you are not yet a subscriber, consider signing up by going to MasterCharsTrading.com. Throughout the presentation, I will be using my proprietary MasterCharsTrading.com price action indicators. You can see them on this chart. You can find out more about them by going in the description. And also, if you are a subscriber, stay tuned. There will be a separate video. We will be covering various security, including, for example, Bitcoin, crude, crude oil, and natural gas are covered in members only section this week. Of course, lots of ETFs, uh, bond ETFs, also foreign ETFs, foreign markets, large cap stocks, and various um, um, various s uh, speculative securities stocks, such as, for example, Sybin, as in Psilocybin, psychedelic firm, Pinterest, Palantir, um, as well as various gold and silver related stocks. So. Stay tuned for that if you are a member. If you're not a member, consider signing up. Let's look at uh, first S&P 500. We're looking at the actual index, SPX. Uh, this interface is tradingview.com. My indicators are available for that interface currently. So we're basically continue the pullback um, notice we have a high a 52 week high here from the 26 uh, 27th of july of this year and we've been kind of coming down in this wave-like pattern wave-like form uh, today uh, this week on the 27th of september we touched over where we kind of made the low for the move and um the week really ended kind of indecisively so we're looking um, if we look at the uh, weekly candlestick it looks a little bit better i mean it looks significantly better than previous week because like um, the week of uh, monday september 18th was you know outright red and was near the low right now we at least kind of went you know lower and then rallied by the end of the week unfortunately it's still a red candle you can see it's still a red candle um, there is still quite a large shadow at the top and even though we can think that this is maybe a hammer candlestick it does not yet feel like we have reached uh, at least a uh, intermediate bottom i think ideally uh, stocks should continue slightly lower <laughs> should continue right uh, for me to become 100 percent interested interested i want to see a touch of this blue support resistance line which is currently at 41.88 so it's about two and a half percent lower uh, at that point uh, the stocks per my system will become oversold so when we see a breakout above the blue line, we, we want to see a pullback towards it. And then once again, we want to be buying there. Now, what I can do is I can turn on the projection uh, of the indicators into the future. And the way I look at it, um, if uh, the indicators do line up, so you can see the projection, it's basically an offset. So we're offsetting the indicators into the future. And if the indicators line up, so right now they're not yet lining up, they're going to uh, start lining up like uh, October 6th in a few days. So once they do line up, um, you can see that the indicators are kind of curving up higher. So what that means is that that uh, buy point or the 
where you know stocks become officially quote unquote oversold per my system um, is going to be slightly higher okay so that means that um, we are um, basically already there if today was uh, November 3rd then we will be buying right now because we will be touching the blue sport resistance line that is projected to be slightly higher in the future at around 40 to 90 it's currently at 41.80 so about um, you know two percent two and a half percent higher than <coughs> current levels so what this is telling me is that um, we see sort of a kind of like a change in change in uh, scenery a little bit change of scenery and potentially we may see um, when the indicators kind of curve up like that towards the price action and we are in the uptrend okay and the indicators curve up like this that means that the bearish levels here are the bearish levels or downtrend levels so bear market currently is at the yellow line which is at three six seven eight which is you know pretty far away it's like 15 percent away okay but if today was uh, November 8th where I'm hovering then the bear market would be only nine percent away you see what I'm trying to tell you what, what I'm saying is um, when we see the indicators kind of curve up like this and they're also kind of narrow towards each other um, there is a a higher likelihood of a trend change now we're still quite far away from uh, outright bear market but once again if nothing else happens we just continue sideways then uh, in November that bear market would be closer than it is now you know now the bear market is like 14% uh, in November it will be 9% away from today's prices okay provided nothing happens so that is you know something to think about uh, I mean I'm not yet worried that we are going to enter a bear market but you know in this line of business pretty much anything is possible and therefore we must also you know think about the possibility of a bear market starting so in my mind bear market implies lower lows and lower highs and the general downward trajectory of a market when I say bull market it just means that we're going to may be making higher highs and higher lows and the general trajectory of a market is up so right this instant right this instant I still think we are in a bull market uptrend and I will continue to treat it as such until we get to the yellow line which is currently around 14 percent away once again so that is just purely price action you know purely looking at what the price is doing looking at the levels uh, we will now look at what's called market breadth so we're looking currently at market breadth indicators some of my favorite market breadth indicators are this one for example is uh, on stockchars.com this is stockchars.com interface the symbol is dollar sign bp spx so it is s p 500 bullish percent index okay you can look up uh, the same place stackshares.com bullish percent index okay I already showed this in the past uh, this is there is a definition there is a way to uh, describe it so it is based on this type of charting this is called point and figure charting and um, uh, basically we can see that there is some called a buy signal based on this type of charting and there is some called a sell signal so this um, index shows how many stocks within the s p 500 are on this point and figure buy signal okay buy signal point and figure once again you can look up what it is and we can see that currently according to this methodology we have 36 percent 36.8 percent 36.8 percent of stocks within the s p 500 are on a buy signal okay it is i would consider deeply oversold all right so previous you can see that here in march of this year 
we had dropped below this 40% mark, we got a significant rally afterwards. Okay, Even 50% is relatively oversold, in my opinion, within a bullish market, bullish uptrend, uptrend, uptrend in market. Okay? Per my system, we have entered a new bull market sometime. Uh, we can we can use S and P 500 ETF SPY. There's the new bull market, beginning of February of this year. Okay, so during the bull market, anything below 50 percent in my mind is already relatively oversold. But 40 percent or lower is definitely oversold. Okay, so this red line right here is a 40 percent mark. During the bear market, the opposite is true. So bear market uh, pr prior to February of this year, 2023, downtrend. Uh, S&P 500 was trending downwards. So anything that is above, you know, 50 or in this case above like 60 percent or so, uh, or other, <laughs> I made it, you know, Fibonacci retracements like 38, 61, so something like that, around that. So around 40 percent, around 60 percent. If we're above that level during the bear market that that's an indication of being overbought okay and we want to consider selling it okay so right now according to this uh, setup according to this uh, index we are definitely i would consider it a deeply oversold right deeply oversold uh, within a bullish uptrend is a recipe for a, at least a bounce or hopefully a rally Another indicator that I'd like to look at occasionally is this. Um, it's once again on stockshares.com, dollar sign CPC. This is <clears throat> uh, Chicago Board of Options Exchange total put to call ratio. Okay, puts on top, calls on the bottom. Put to call ratio. Okay, so a put is a uh, bought when. Uh, people think that the market will continue lower. It's a bearish bet. It's a bet that this, the market will continue lower. A call is bought when you want to be uh, thinking that the market will be going up. Call is a bullish bet. Okay. Put to call. So we divide uh, calls, uh, puts by calls. Um, if there are more puts, this indicator will go up. If there are more calls, this indicator will go down. Okay. So. This indicator is not really useful when it's like in the middle somewhere. However, when it's um, somewhat overextended in one direction or the other, it becomes a little bit useful. Okay. So um, we're going to look at, uh, you know, a bull market started here in February of this year. So this is the beginning of uh, uh, somewhere January, February. Okay. So. At this point, we're going to be looking at uh, conditions of too many puts. Okay, during a bull market, people think that the stock market will collapse. That is not a normal thing. During a bull market, people should think that the market will continue higher. Okay, so when there are too many puts during a bull market, you want to be considering that we're about to have a rally. Okay, how extreme is this reading? Is not necessarily kind of clear like for example you can see how extreme this reading was in the beginning of this year i mean it was way up there okay more puts very large amount of puts okay we got a rally from 2000 beginning of 2023 till february and then eventually we entered the new bull market around beginning of february at the same time around february the number of put to calls begin to trend in favor of calls once again so at this point you know people thinking that we're going to go through the roof to the moon uh, and we get the opposite we get a corrective action okay now this right here this period um, like in march of this year notice that the number of puts to call ratio there were not that many puts but we got a tremendous run run okay so this indicator is by by of course not perfect. Okay, ideally it should call it should show you know way too many puts here uh, in the beginning of March, right there where I'm hovering, but it didn't. It sort of showed you know like a somewhat large number of puts. So people thought that yes we're gonna collapse, but no of course we didn't. We we, we turned around continued higher. Okay, so following along here in July August we got 
way too many calls. We got way too many people thinking that we're going to go through the roof once again. Okay, we can look at the... Yeah, there there is that period right here in July of this year. People thinking that, yeah, we're going to break out to new all-time record highs. Okay, apparently not. We got... There were so many calls here that we got a correction. And we're kind of in the middle of this correction right now. So currently we are way too many puts once again okay we in fact right you know yesterday we had uh the most puts since the beginning of 2023 that means that just a few days ago right here where i'm hovering on the 27th of september people thought we we're going to collapse to zero or something like this so we're gonna we we're just going to unravel completely okay um so what i'm saying is this is not normal we have too many puts and we we should be expecting a rally okay so i think we are super close um according to price action we're about two percent away from a place where i become very excited myself according to the puts to call ratio we're there right now i'm becoming very excited according to bullish percent index i'm super excited there is a lot of um, people who think that we're going to collapse so those two signals so far I'm sorry those two indicators so far are flashing that we're very close to a bottom finally i wanted to show another market breadth index this is dollar sign spx a200r so this is um s p 500 percent of stocks above the 200 day moving average so for example here's apple um okay here's apple we're going to turn i'm going to turn on the 200 day moving average this is a 200 day uh, moving average okay right here um and notice that currently we dropped you know for a day or so for two days like from 27th and 28th of september we dropped below the 200 day but now we're above the 200 day moving average so according to this indicator it apple would count as above 200 day moving average okay it, it's just like one stock you know apple is gigantic right but it will count the same as a as a a small stock in s p 500 so it is not weighted according to um it's not weighted according to the uh, market capitalization you know apple is gigantic but it will weigh the same as uh some utility company you know what i'm saying so however it is also a useful indicator and you can see that uh during the bull market whenever we see a drop uh, at least below 50 percent but ideally even below like 40 percent we get a rally so here's three instances well two instances so far but hopefully we're going to get another one so here's the first instance in march of this year and another instance in uh, may of this year we, we dropped below like 39 40 percent and then we we've got a rally during the bear market it's the opposite you need to think when do we get above 50 percent so for example we got above 50 percent here in august of 2022 and then we collapsed you know we, we moved lower afterwards so right now the latest reading was 39.8 percent so 39.8 percent of stocks within the s p 500 were below 200 day moving average just recently okay this to me this is deeply oversold um, and a correct you know a, and now we're most likely to be get to be uh, near the bottom very near the bottom and most likely we are going to start um seeing uh, buying pressure return okay so this is uh basically as far as uh, stocks are concerned this is what the picture is currently if you have any comments please make a comment what do you guys think about uh, market breadth analysis what do you guys think about price action analysis do you use either one okay and then let's move on today two dollar currency index this is dxy so 
there it is this is a weekly chart of dollar currency index notice that it made a low here in july of this year and then for 10 previous weeks we just went non-stop higher okay look at this every single candlestick is green how often does that happen <laughs> not that often okay it, it does happen but doesn't you know so many identical green candlesticks you know don't happen that often like there's one right there there's a period um, eight bars you know straight down eight eight weeks but 10 weeks in the roll going straight higher quite unusual okay so what are we expecting as far as dollar and why do we care about dollar we care about dollar because we trade gold um, if gold is an uh, if there is if the dollar is strong then gold will be weakened vice versa if uh, dollar is weak gold will be strengthened so inflation usually happens when dollar is weak uh, in this case dollar all of a sudden started to strengthen strongly uh, after hitting here a low in july of this year all right so let's look into the future and we'll see that we're projecting the indicators now into the future okay notice that the indicators are curving down okay so what this means is that even if nothing happens we just kind of trade sideways this this does happen we just trade sideways uh into um you know right there so that's uh 18 trading days and into end of october if we simply trade sideways we will close above the blue support resistance line at that point we will say that okay the dollar is no longer in a downtrend and why do i even think that the dollar is still in the downtrend because the last signal was bearish okay there is the downward facing arrows um, around the red line definitely bearish uh, signals a a 100 bearish sign is a 52-week low there's a 52-week low right here in july of this year so up until now and i'm actually still thinking that we're in a downtrend but we need to quickly very 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 quickly um reaffirm this downtrend okay so to reaffirm this downtrend we need to move lower and close below the red line at that point we will at least have a downward you know a signal to sell the sell the dollar we haven't gotten it yet okay and once again notice the way the indicators are curving notice the way they are narrowing so they're getting closer together so i can i can show you that currently the indicators are that far apart you know nine points okay but even in a few days a few weeks uh, they're going to be only five and a half points apart you see so this all show me that there is a shows me that there is a possibility of a trend change and dollar will go up will continue going higher will become a bullish security will start to be um, make uh, higher highs and higher lows okay and all the dollar needs to do is do nothing and trade sideways into uh, late october november okay uh, another possibility is dollar actually continues higher and just you know goes right up, goes up and we're not that far off we're, we're only like a few percentage points away uh, from the bullish uptrend levels so once we close above the blue line we're going to say that we're now in an uptrend and by the definition we're going to say that gold is in a downtrend so let's look at gold gold has been feeling strengthening in dollar badly but i wanted to show it to you on the weekly time frame first so <clears throat> there's dollar i'm sorry there's gold on the weekly time frame so each candlestick is one week's worth of activity okay don't be scared by weekly or daily there is the different time frames okay so this big red candlestick is 
this week uh, from Friday. Uh, I'm sorry, from this week. Uh, so what does that mean? It doesn't look good. Um, it broke below, uh, first of all, it broke below the blue line. Okay, that's number one. There is the blue line. Uh, it decisively broke below it. Secondly, we broke below previous recent lows. Okay, there's the previous recent low from June and then the previous recent low from August. On a weekly time frame, it looks even worse. There is the breakdown. You can I just draw it then. Okay, so it doesn't look good. Um, unless, once again, we see a quick move uh, by the dollar uh, lower, then gold might be able to uh, come out of the spiral. So again, I'm projecting now the indicators into the future. Notice what's happening with the indicators. Now we're doing, we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing unfavorable conditions for gold. We're seeing the indicators are going to curve up as early as uh, 31st of October, 1st of November. And that means that if today, today's prices are already below projected indicator levels in November. So if nothing happens, we're going to be in a downtrend. Okay, we, we just trade sideways. Uh, we just need to uh, get to the uh, end of, of October and gold will be in a downtrend. That means we're going to be thinking about selling gold short and most likely it will start making lower lows and lower highs. This is my definition of a bear market. Lower lows and lower highs. 52 week lows, 52 weeks, uh, um, and the 52 week lows basically. So, this is the gold situation. I'm going to show you silver. It looks kind of bad, especially today's candlestick. I mean, look at this giant candle. So, I'm going to try to. So, I'm going to read it for you um, the way the in the, the way the candles are red. So, the candle is red means that we have um, opened higher than the close. Okay, so we'll go left to right, open higher than the close. Sometime, sometime throughout the day, this candlestick was a giant green candlestick. It looked like this for a little while, okay? But sometime throughout the day, the bears, the people who are thinking that the stock, or in this case, silver will continue lower, just sold the crap out of it. And it continued lower and sold all the way to the bottom and closed near the lows, all right? Additionally, we closed below the lows from August. So silver looks really bad. Um, technically, it's still in an uptrend, but once again, the way the dollar is acting, the way gold is acting, all silver needs to do is just, you know, go a little bit lower, like 4% lower becomes bearish security, downtrend in security. Notice also the indicators are curving up. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. This is honestly not a very good sign uh, for people who, you know, for gold bugs. Um, I don't really care one way or the other. Um, I'm more of a objective analyst. I mean, yes, we might one day have, you know, end of the world and we might all have to go to barter and, you know, use gold, but it's not there. You know, we're not there yet. Um, and the, right now, um, I'm kind of getting more and more reluctant to uh, hold anything gold related. All right. Um, what do you guys think? Make a comment. Uh, as always, please don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to this channel also you can enable notifications for this channel share this video with others uh, if you are interested in what you're seeing head over to masterchairstrading.com click on sign up sign up one of the products i have trading indicators so this indicators that you can see on this line on this chart this green blue red and yellow line available for tradingu.com you can trade pretty much anything under the sun. The newsletters are also available. So I send, send out daily alerts about various securities that we trade, both on the long side when we buy and also on the short side when we sell, try to sell short or buy puts. It's a little bit more sophisticated, but it's possible to do. Um, the, the bearish market uh, is much more difficult. 
uh, to trade but not impossible so also we send out so i send out um, various notifications about the stocks we uh, trade and uh, every week there is a separate members only video of course the best deal is to get both uh, trading indicators and newsletters at 59.95 per month it's a very good deal you can sign up via, via uh, credit card apple pay gp or paypal weekly uh, monthly but i also have um I'm, I'm working on finally adding the um yearly uh, subscription options if you uh, would like to sign up now just send me a message contact me here all right that's it for this week's recap again thank you for watching and have another great trading week bye, -bye.